I want to share with you something called the process of manifestation or how we create our results. Your thoughts lead to your feelings, which lead to your actions, and all of that leads to your re no. You say that with me, please? Your thoughts lead to feelings, lead to lead to now, each of us has a personal money and success blueprint already ingrained in our subconscious mind. And my friends, it is this blueprint, more than anything and everything else combined, that will determine your financial life. What that means is you can be the best business person, the best negotiator, you can be the best marketer, the best salesperson, you can be the best communicator, you can be the best manager, you can be the best at your job. You can know everything about real estate, you can know everything about stocks and bonds and other kinds of investments. You can have years of financial experience, you can already be retired or close to it. But if your subconscious money blueprint is in preset for a high level of success, you will never, what's the word please? Never. You will never amass a large amount of money and if by chance you do, you will somehow manage to lose it. Can I give you an example? Raise your hand if you've heard of somebody named Donald Trump. <laughs> Multi-billionaire. He loses everything and more. Two years later, he's got it all back again and more. Why? Because his money blueprint is preset for high. On the other side of the coin, we have lottery winners. We've all heard the stories, yes? They win five, 10, 50, $100 million. Five years later, virtually half of them are right back to where they started. Why? Their money blueprint is set for low. And this is why often older people end up losing their money or being broke. Here's a story that just blew my mind. I had a widow come up to me in my seminar and she and her husband had saved all their lives for retirement and they did fairly well. But almost the minute that her husband passed away, things started to go downhill quickly. Their investments started to falter, his company pension plan had dried up and the medical bills all came due at once. Within 60 days, she was virtually broke. What I discovered is that she grew up dirt poor and she watched her parents age in poverty. And with a few more questions, I realized that her husband's money blueprint was set for decent success. But her money blueprint was set for dead broke, which is exactly what was happening. Thank goodness we were able to reset her blueprint and move her into a brand new direction. The good news is you can actually change your money blueprint. By the way, you've already started by acknowledging you have a money blueprint and by making the declarations you're learning today. Just so you know, money isn't the only blueprint that you've got. You've also got a relationship blueprint, a health blueprint, and even a happiness blueprint already ingrained in your subconscious mind. So, let's talk about how your blueprint is formed. The blueprint is formed primarily based on the programming you received in the past, especially as a young child. Help me out here. Who are some of the primary sources of this information? Yeah. Parents, good. Who else? My teacher. Authority figures, siblings, who else? Teachers. Yes, teachers, religious leaders, media, culture, friends, thank you. Take culture. Isn't it true that certain cultures have a certain way of thinking and dealing with money? Yes? yes. And that other cultures have a completely different way of thinking and dealing with money? Yes? yes. And let me ask you a question. Does the child come out of the womb doing money that way or were they taught how to do money? Thank you. The fact is we were all taught how to do money and the issue is that most of us were taught by people who either didn't have a lot of money or they had a lot of emotional issues around it and their ways of thinking became our ways of thinking. All right, let's talk about how we're conditioned. Three primary methods of conditioning. There's verbal programming, there's modeling, and their specific incidents. Verbal programming. That's all about what did you hear when you were young? What messages did you get? Modeling. That's all about what did you see when you were young? And specific incidents. What did you experience when you were young around money, success, wealth, and rich people? Let's start with verbal programming. What were the phrases or messages that you heard about money and success and rich people when you were growing up? Raise your hand and let me know if you heard this one. Money is the root of all evil. 
Excellent. We got one there. Rich people are greedy. You have to work hard to make money. That's a really popular one. You can't be rich and spiritual. Excellent. Money doesn't buy happiness. Money doesn't bring love. How about this one? Money doesn't grow on trees. And I suppose nobody but me ever heard this one. We can't afford it. Excellent. Want to hear my father's favorite? Anytime I asked him for anything, he'd snarl at me, go, hey, what am I, paying money? <laughs> I used to joke around with him, I'd say, I wish, I'll take an arm, a leg, I'll take a baby finger, Dad. <laughs> he never laughed once. Anyway, in addition to the generic messages that we heard, we also heard about stereotype messages. For example, if you're a man, maybe the message that you somehow got was that your job in life is to be a provider and if you're not financially successful you're not a real man now whether you became financially successful or not how has it felt to have that pressure on you what have you missed out of in your life your family your fun your inner peace because of the stress of what you were conditioned to believe about putting bread on the table and yet, this is simply a blueprint.